Yo, what's up? Welcome back to another episode of the Sulas. Um, very popular question I get is about the model. Uh, so we're gonna walk through in this video how to build a super simple model. We're gonna use the MBA as an example. Now, let me start by saying I didn't go to school to analyze data. In fact, I got expelled from UConn in my sixth week. <laughs> um, I have no college education. So this is all self-taught. So if you're really good with spreadsheets, you might be watching this thinking like, you know, there's a super easy way to do that. I know there is. I'm showing you the simplest way. The point I'm making is even if you have zero experience with Google Sheets or Excel, you should be able to follow along and build one of your own. Welcome to the source. The source. get the source all right so first step is we're going to take a completely blank spreadsheet here let's call it mba model uh, first we need to build the framework for our data um, so right here let's call this bulls and let's call this one pistons we need offense defense offense defense efg ORB, that's offensive rebounding rate, turnover rate, free throw rate. Now, use this tool right here all the time because it's this. these get confusing, especially if you're not too experienced with this kind of stuff. So let's put a light red black background for the Bulls and a uh, light blue background for the Pistons so we don't mix our numbers up. Uh, so the next step is to just enter this data. So let's. I'm going to just fast forward while I do that. All right, now that we've got that entered in, you know what, real quick, I wanna merge these cells to make it a little cleaner looking. This, what I'm doing right now doesn't matter. It just, it's a little easier to read if you, there's gonna be so many numbers on here that you want your data to be as organized and clean as possible. Maybe throw a bold on these center. All right, whatever, whatever. <laughs> you want, you get it. Um, so here's our data here. Next step, we need Offenses of efficiency, defensive efficiency, and pace for each team. So I'm going to go ahead and grab those numbers and enter them. All right, there they are. And again, just keeping things so they look correct and we don't get confused. Light red, light blue for bulls and pistons next up we need to weight our different statistical categories obviously efficient field goal percentage is going to carry more weight in our handicap than free throw rate uh, so how we do that let's put in a column called weight um the traditional way that people have been handicapping for decades is 40 25 20 15 in the exact order of these stat categories here um so we're gonna go to 1.25 1.75 Mathematically, that comes out to be the same. Whatever, you don't have to understand that right now. You can alter these later. Um, so first up, we go equals. That tells spreadsheets we're about to do an equation. Uh, first up, we need EFG difference for the Bulls. We're on the away side here. So Bulls offense plus Pistons defense. Enter. There we go. Now over here, we'll do the Pistons. Equals Pistons offense plus Bulls defense. And then all the way to the right, we need the difference always home minus away remember always home minus away home minus away minus 4.3 there's our difference in efg percentage for these two teams next up offensive rebounding rate same exact thing equals bulls offense plus pistons defense you can see spreadsheets is recommending because you can see the pattern you could also do this copy <laughs> paste and look it automatically did pistons offense plus Bulls defense because it's in the exact same place in the column. You can do the same thing here. But remember, just to show you how we got there, this is equals home minus away, 2.2. So actually the rebounding advantage goes to the Pistons here. Copy and paste on down. In case you did yours out of order, what we just did, again, it's getting repetitive, but, oh, I'm sorry, no, actually turnovers is different. I'm glad we stopped here. So turnovers is the only category where the number, if, if your offensive number is higher, that's bad. The lower number is better. So actually, on the left side, you go equals Bulls defense plus Pistons offense. Basically, what you do here is just reverse it. What is my formula missing? Oh, I put a parentheses in there. And then the exact same thing here equals 
Pistons defense plus Bulls offense. So the turnover numbers is that you just reverse it, but still home minus away. <clears throat> Again, you can just copy and paste and then it'll drop your formula one down. So a huge advantage here for the Bulls in the turnover margin. Last up, free throw rate equals Bulls offense plus Pistons defense equals Pistons offense plus Bulls defense equals home minus away. There you go. Here's the difference of our four factors. If you notice, we didn't use these numbers yet. We're about to use them now. So let's add our weight in. Now, this is so unorganized. I mean, you sh I should be doing shit like this. Uh, I should be labeling every single cell. Now, also, if you're real nice with Google Spreadsheets or Excel, you can type up one equation that does all of this for you. But if I did it that way, and no one who's a beginner would understand. So um, let's end on our weight. Simple equals this times this. And we can go ahead and copy and paste this down because it's the same thing every time. Basically what I did by copying and pasting the formula down, it's gonna multiply every single figure in this column by the corresponding figure in this column. It's gonna do the same pattern. Um, if you're not comfortable doing that, just click equals, click on it, times the weight in the same row. Here are our numbers with the weights added in. Now this all added together equals sum of these four cells right here. There's our point spread, bulls minus 9.225. But what do we do with that information? Okay, we have a point spread based on very simple data. There's a lot more you can add to this. <laughs> um, but how do we know how many points are gonna be scored in the game? This is where pace comes into play. So we're, let's, call, let's just write pace, bulls, pistons. Um, all right, so we this is where we need the efficiency numbers and the pace. So first, let's get our uh, efficiency numbers together. First up, average. Bulls offense and hold the control key down. Pistons defense. There you go. This efficiency number for the Pistons average. Pistons offense. Now this is just to help you visualize it. Obviously there's a much simpler way to use these four numbers. There you go. Now that we have these four numbers, that's showing us how many points should be scored per 100 possessions. But there might not be 100 possessions exactly in this game. In fact, there almost definitely won't be. So to decide how many possessions there will be, we need to average their pace together. So here are their pace numbers. Play. So we need to take average of this and this. These are the two teams' pace numbers, 98.75. Um, this is very simple math, but in case <laughs> I'll, I'll put it, I'll type it out so you can visualize it. Equals 98 over 100. Here we go. Bulls efficiency times the number of projected possessions. Pistons efficiency times the number of projected uh, possessions. So this is a score prediction based solely on efficiency numbers. This is not going to be your best indicator here. What this tells us is the total score. A total points, I'm sorry. Here you go. Some of these two. 223.175 points scored in this game total. And our point spread should be 9.225 in favor of the Bulls. That's the information we need. So... Over here, Chicago. Here's our final score. Here's the fun part. Detroit. Let's make it all pretty because this is our main attraction here. Now, again, this is so simple, and I'll, I'll, I'll show you some other stuff in a second. Equals total score divided by two, but we need to put that in parentheses. This is going to be plus. No, I'm sorry, minus because it's the away team. Minus in parentheses. Point spread divided by two. Let's make this a cool font. Also, there's no decimal places in an NBA score. So let's change this to just zero. 116 equals total points divided by two plus parentheses point spread divided by two. Let's copy the formatting over. There you go. Our score prediction, 116.107. Now, this is based on the most simple data. Um, now, what if I want to add stuff to my model, right? Because there's other stuff you can add. Um, what if I want to add home court advantage? Notice we didn't put home court advantage in there. So there's a couple of things you could do here. Um, 
Simple. If you want to just say, you know what? I just want to add three points to the home team for home court advantage. That's simple. Just do this. Plus three. And use this number instead. So this is what home court advantage is. Um, so instead of I-22, you're taking I-23. 115. So now it's 115, 108. Altered our score a little bit. Now let's say we want to add something to this, like injuries. Injuries is a good one. There's count. There's thousands of things you can add to it. You can go individual. I'll show you mine real quick to get see how many things I've added to mine over the years. Um, check this out. So I'm posting. Here are mine. I mean, I got mine's broken down the last five games, the last ten games, full season. I got. Um, Strength of schedule for last five, last 10. I got shooting zones in here. Um, all of this goes into my model. But this I, this is just added. I add things all the time. Um, I got transition points in there. Um, you got to start somewhere. You start with a small model and you slowly add to it. So let's start with a, th a simple thing like injuries. So right here, injuries. Um, let's leave five spots for injuries and we'll call this sum of these oh four spots i'm sorry so let's say in this game all right uh well first we would need to edit it so for this point spread we're gonna do this plus three plus this so for this one let's say demar Derozan's out that's going to be minus points for the bulls let's say he's worth three points so we're gonna go up at a plus three that's plus three towards the pistons there we go now our points our projected score is 113 110 but wait, um, Jaden uh, Ivy, Jaden Ivy, Jalen, Jaden Ivy, sorry, <laughs> is going to miss the game for the Pistons. Let's say that's a minus 1.5. There you go, 114, 109. Um, uh, you get the point. <laughs> you can, oh, wait, injury update, DeRozan's playing. There you go, 115, 108. Um, you get the point. There are countless things you could add. This I can make this video two hours long, going through all the different things you can add. Um, the idea is you just... Put it somewhere on your sheet, factor it into this number, and it'll automatically be built here. So just to test to see if we've done it right, watch this. So let's go over here and say the Pistons were offensive rebounding rate is at 40%. They're the best offensive rebounding team in the league. All of a sudden, our score flips to 114-109. Let's say the Pistons, let's control Z, get that back to where it was. Let's say the Pistons defense is forcing turnovers at a 25% rate. Just ripping turnovers. 114, 110 Detroit. Control Z. Let's say the Bulls have been hitting 65% of the EFG percentage. 125, 98. See, EFG holds the highest weight. So let's control Z that. Um, over here, here are your weights. You can adjust these accordingly. Um, say, yo, uh, you're a big rebounding guy. Here, the, the key is to keep the weights the same. Um, so in this case, they add up to five. So if I want to rebounding to be more, Put here, drop this to 0. 0.5 and this to 0. 0.5. Looks like it came out to be the same. Oh no, 114, 109, it did change, I'm sorry. It went from 115, 108 to 114, uh, 109. Now, what if I wanted to take my EFG weight down, and make rebounding huge? All of a sudden we're looking at a close game because the Pistons have the rebounding edge. So I feel like I'm just rambling here. I think you get the point. I'm sorry that this looks so sloppy, um, obviously. All these formatting options are pretty straightforward. You can make yours look really nice and really to under, uh, easy to understand. All right, one last step. Now that we have our score prediction, how does that translate into betting? Now, obviously, if the line's bulls minus four, this model's telling us to bet the bulls. Um, but how much do we bet on it? How much do we like it? Uh, so first, let's let's pull up some NBA key numbers. Is this one? All right, I mean, this looks like a decent enough sample size. I don't know this site. Probably not the best data to use, <laughs> but whatever, just for this example. Um, all right, so we got our key number seven, five, six, eight. Yep, that's right. Um, so let's go back to our model here. Um, so say the line's Bulls minus four, Pistons plus four and a half, I should say. Um, so that's going to look, it's like giving us a two and a half point lean on the Bulls. But what two numbers are we passing over? We're passing over five and six. We're not passing over 13 and 14. There's a big difference. Um, so if we go to our sheet here, it looks like 
we have 6.6% and 6.4%. That comes out to be 13%. Let's head over to the no vig calculator on odds jam here. Um, a minus four and a half favorite is going to be about minus 195 odds. Wow. It's sad that I know that. I do this <laughs> I do this way too much <laughs> that I know that by heart. Um, so this is telling us that um, based on data, this is the favorite's going to win money line 63% of the time. So that means we need to multiply these numbers by 63% equals this might be getting a little too advanced. I, I, people might not be understanding this. It's not good enough to just calculate how often it lands on five and six because sometimes the Pistons could win by five or six. So that's why I'm adding these percentages in how often the favorite lands on five or six when they're favored by four and a half. My bad if this is getting crazy. If our model's saying we're going to win by seven, how many times is that going to work out for us? How many times is it going to be five and six? How many times above the 50% threshold are we going to be? And in this case, we're going to be... 8.19 percent that's our edge here so we go back to odds jam this time we're going to the um expected value calculator odds minus 110 100 dollar wager and our win probability is now 58 point what is it 8.12 percent 8.19 percent 58.19 percent Expected value eleven dollars and nine cents for every one hundred dollar bet. So if we bet this a hundred times, or let's just say ten times, that'd be a thousand dollars, and we be up in theory a hundred and ten dollars and ninety cents. For anyone who's experienced that has their own MBA model, you're probably watching this like, bro, you gotta add this. You you forgot this. I know, but the people who ask for this are crazy beginners. So I can't. That was probably already too much to throw at them. I tried to make this a simple one-on-one -on -one video. Hopefully this made sense. Hopefully you got something out of it. I always share the current updated version of my model for today's games on the members page of my website. So if you wanna check that out. But I'm really excited to show you what I have coming hopefully next month, uh, maybe August, we'll see. Um, but this is how it's gonna work. All the data is gonna be plugged in for you. I do all that and you can just adjust sliders. So basically, you have your own model that you can customize to your liking without all the work of punching in the data. I do that for you. Hopefully, that's going to be available on the Sauce Network app soon. Thanks for watching and best of luck building your spreadsheet. Remember to be patient. Um, it takes a while and it's not something, it's not a one and done thing. It's something you have to continually work at. So if this is something you're passionate about, give it a shot.